Today is so freaking exciting. It is the day that I'm going to Eras Tour, Taylor Swift at MetLife. I'm like out of breath because I am so excited. I have been waiting for this moment for so long and I just, I don't know how I'm gonna keep it together. Like there's gonna be some tears. I'm gonna need to wear waterproof mascara because I'm, I'm gonna lose it. Like I have a feeling I'm gonna lose it. I just love her so much. I'm so excited. Uh, greetings internet, by the way. But I thought I would vlog my getting ready process. I would vlog, I'm actually gonna throw like a little pregame of sorts. Like we're not drinking <laughs> because I refuse to have to pee. Like I'm going to try my very best to pee right before and not miss a single song, but we're gonna see how it goes. So I wouldn't really call it a pregame, I guess, but I'm having the girls over here before the concert. We're gonna do like a little charcuterie spread, snack, just kind of get our bearings before we go to the concert. We're getting a car to pick us up here. So Brooke, Danielle and I are going together. I'm so excited. We got our tickets like months and months and months ago. And finally the day is here. I'm a little bit sweaty or like slicked because I did a hard workout this morning. And before I shower and like get ready, like do my whole process, show you guys my outfit, all of the above. I'm actually gonna go run out to my local cheese shop, grab some charcuterie supplies and get all that in the fridge and ready, like get everything I need here, bring everything I need into the apartment and then just like hunker down and focus on getting ready. It's like we're going to war. It's like <laughs> we're preparing for, I don't know, like it's like prom, it's like prom, literally. I woke up this morning and I'm like, ah, oh, prom. Honestly, because I didn't really have an amazing experience at my prom. Uh, so this is going to be the same thing. I like can't wait to be surrounded by people that just get me. Like that is one of the highlights of going to any Taylor Swift concert. It's just like, I feel like people that appreciate Taylor Swift, we're all very similar in some way, shape or form, you know? So I'm very excited about that. Uh, but you guys will see which era I'm going for later on in this vlog, but I am like, I'm giddy, I'm giddy. I'm giddy. I walked by Cornelia Street on the way to the gym this morning and I'm like, I genuinely wonder what the surprise songs are gonna be. I feel like it might be Welcome to New York, but that just feels too easy, like too predictable and Taylor is just not predictable at all. So this is about to be the best day ever and I am so excited to bring you guys along. Okay, I went to Murray's Cheese Shop if you guys come to the city, definitely check it out. They have really good, fresh, delicious cheeses and other things. I got like little black truffle chips and then just like an assortment of cheeses that I always go for, like a little bit of a salami situation. We got some olives, some just good, easy stuff that everyone likes. I'm gonna just throw these on a board in a little while. I'm gonna put them in the fridge for now and when the girlies come over, we'll have something to snack on. But I got some glitter from Sephora this morning, so I'm hoping that pans out. And I spray tanned last night. Like, I am I'm ready, okay? I've been preparing for this, like the Super Bowl. I also found out this morning that yesterday was apparently National Wine Day, and I did nothing for National Wine Day, and I'm feeling a little bit disappointed in myself for that. Like, I feel like I should have planned something, but... I did nothing, so. All right, team, we are just about ready. I began filming my getting ready process and then I realized that the lighting in my bathroom, I don't know if it's because it's like LED or something, it was like really weird, like making very weird like warped like lines on the screen. So I gave up on that, but I did a very classic just, you know, Taylor Swift sort of look. Gold shadow that I like honestly put kind of everywhere, like I just like, threw it all over my body and <laughs> did like this gold, like uh, chunky glittery shadow, then liner, rare beauty actually. So supporting a friend of Taylor's and then red lipstick. This is um, a liquid lipstick from NARS. I believe it's actually the shade that Taylor wears most often. It's like called Dragon Girl or something, uh, but it's the liquid version. So apparently it'll stay on better. Um, I've worn this like all night one night to a movie premiere and it stayed on very nicely So we're wearing this and then I guess I should show you guys the dress The dress so this 
is, well, almost just fell backwards on my floor pillow. This is the dress. It is Nadine Marabi. She sent it to me actually, and it was perfect timing. I'm like, well, where am I gonna wear this? Oh, I don't know, maybe the Taylor Swift concert where this is so fearless. Like it just spoke to me when I opened it out of the package. I'm like, this is fearless in a dress. Um, though I do have some fears about it because it has these little uh, golden sticks, like porcupine sticks. I look like a golden porcupine, honestly. Um, these little, whatever you call them on the bottom, they kind of like go straight down. And then when you sit, they kind of get all messed up and they bend and like they can't bend back. But I've decided I don't really care because I just like feel so cute in this outfit. And it's actually pretty comfortable, honestly, even though it's a mini dress and I don't really wear a ton of mini dresses. Um, so I've always been like pretty self-conscious of my legs, but I think it's really cute. So I'm wearing this, plus gonna throw on my old cowboy boots, just like a pair of white. They're actually kind of gross still from Stagecoach, even though I washed them pretty good before putting them in my suitcase. But I guess honestly, they're gonna get gross again if you really think about it. But I love the cowboy boots because they're so comfy. So I can stand in these all night long with no complaints. I have a clear purse because at MetLife, you have to have a clear purse when you go in there. So I have this ugly, I mean, it's not ugly, but it's pretty ugly. Like I'm probably not gonna use it aside from like another concert or a sports game or something, but it's from Amazon and just throwing all my stuff in there. But I guess in the meantime, I'm gonna actually finish a few TikToks that I started. I did the beginning part of the TikTok and now I'm gonna do the end part of the TikTok. I'm gonna whip up my little cheese board. The girls are gonna come over. We're gonna discuss our looks. And then we're gonna go to the concert. Oh my God, I'm so freaking excited. Whew. Like I was just thinking while I was getting ready that Taylor is somewhere like getting ready herself, you know? Like she's preparing too. And little does she know, I'll be there. <laughs> Doesn't know who I am. Actually, she did like one of my TikToks, two of my TikToks, um, like on my birthday almost. It was like a birthday present to me this past year, um, but I don't think she, I think she likes a lot of TikToks, so. <laughs> anyway, she's seen my face before, I guess. Stupid old pickup truck, you never let me try. You're a redneck heartbreak. My hastily made little cheese board, honestly, not my best work, but it's edible. <laughs> and these chips are so darn good, the truffle chips. So I take the chunk up. Oh, uh, yeah. We're getting, we're getting, the lighting's better and then here. You literally like stamp it in. Hopefully it works that It worked. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like the oh, whole wait. time. Oh, it doesn't get caught no in copyright. No copyright. Oh, yeah, you're so right. Right now I have curls in though, not, no bling. Just, uh, just curls. That's very lover of you. Is it? Feel. I thought I that, know. I thought that it, it was something different. It looked really good with the dress. Where's the dress from? Uh, Dana Foley, New York. It's like a boutique. Oops. Oh, I'm already <laughs> that. I knew that I you wow, you got yeah, the feathers. I didn't. You know, you, it's the delicate balance of like how much do you want to do? Well, you don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it. Because otherwise, it's like, wait, I mean, is look. there something in your hair? You know, when you're like, oh, I thought you're out there. <laughs> wait, turn around, turn around. You know yeah. Like, no, I know what you mean. Okay, really you need good. one here. Okay. Definitely one right there. Right there. Yeah, right there. Alrighty, let's see if this works. Doing it backwards. You got it. Work. Yep. Wow. Wait, this is so cool. Right? And so they're lightly sticky and they kind of just so like stick. Woo. I feel like I used to have one of these when I was young. Yeah, it's fun. It's like a child. Wait, sleepover. I want you to do oh, it in Danielle. Pick your poison. Like, pick your poison. Um, yes, I think I only have one roll of them though, but they would go with your outfit. Um, what do you have? Like, I don't want to like wait. What do you have a lot of? Do you want me to do star? Well, you really could do them though, but I just you could do that and regular if you want. Who are you? I am Speak Now. You are gorgeous. <laughs> speak Now. Speak Now. Don't get married. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to watch all the videos. Oh, of like, I cause oh, I want to be surprised. Yeah, like whenever, whenever a concert video like came up, I was like, oop, I'm gonna like look at it for a second and then like scroll by. Yeah. So I don't see. You didn't watch the lives. I don't watch the lives cause I get nervous. Like I watch the um the surprise songs, mm. but see, I literally don't know. I don't know. Wow. I'm gonna be so surprised. Does it look good? But it we looks have so good. beauty it's school really happening good. over here.
morning, everyone. Morning after Taylor Swift concert, and I woke up feeling a little bit like hungover, but I didn't even drink, so I think I'm just dehydrated. But all worth it because I had the best night of my freaking life. MetLife, New Jersey, night one. She knocked it out of the park. Not only did we get to see her new music video before everybody else, Ice Spice came out and we got two surprise songs. We got Maroon and we got Getaway Car. I am so without words. I don't know what to even say because it's been so long since she's toured. I like forgot, like I knew how great she was, but I forgot just how much of a masterpiece every song, every like, way that she portrays the song is. The background dancers were amazing. It just was an incredible night. And like the weather was so good too. It wasn't cold, like it wasn't hot. It was just perfect. Everyone was so just like kind and happy and like the best freaking night ever. And now it is, what's today? Saturday. Yeah, Saturday morning. And I'm actually going to walk this bag over to Brooke because she left her like hair um, sticker, whatever that thing is, hair jewel thingy <laughs> here. So I'm gonna go return this to her. And while I'm doing that, just like go for a nice walk, get my steps in this morning. I really don't have much going on this weekend, like really nothing at all. So I'm just really focusing on listening to my body, doing what I want to do. And that's it. So like going for a walk, getting a coffee, getting an acai bowl later maybe. I'm not really sure. I'm just like taking it easy, taking it slow this weekend. Very excited about that. I feel like it's been a minute since I've been able to do that like without distractions or like people being like, Katie, come to the bar. And I'm like, I have no willpower, so I will go to the bar. So I'm happy that this weekend I can just be and that's it. And Taylor Swift was enough for me. Like that was enough excitement for me for months, okay? Like I, I don't know how to go on after this. And now every other show I'm gonna see on TikTok or wherever, I'm gonna be like, ugh, now I'm like, it's done, right? Like it, it was so good, but it's over and I don't have anything to look forward to now. So hopefully she tours again and hopefully I will be there. Okay, so that's it, Saturday morning. This is the look. I'm wearing a Fabletics top, Lululemon bottoms, corded headphones because my AirPods are dead and charging. I have these little Ray-Ban sunglasses. I haven't worn Ray-Bans in a minute, but they sent me a bunch of pairs and I'm like, wow, these are like really solid frames and they feel really comfortable on my face. And my goal right now is to get 10,000 steps in, really get my body moving. I'm a little bit sore from my workout yesterday and from standing up for five hours at Taylor. So I need to stretch out the limbs and just walk like nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing too over the top workout wise this weekend. I'm just going to go for a bunch of walks and hopefully read some books. Like that's kind of my goal. I wish I had like a little patio to sit out on. That's one, one regret. I do have, but I can just open my door and it'll feel like I have a patio, you know, so. Going to the east side. <laughs> I just worked out and now I'm making myself a protein smoothie because I've been told that's what you should do after you work out and they just honestly taste really good. My friend Allie is actually a dietitian and she studies this stuff or has studied. She like is a registered dietitian now. She just graduated. Um, but she told me, she's like, I mean, honestly, I've, I've read it everywhere, but she told me that eating protein or like consuming protein after working out is really good for you, good for recovery, good for muscle building and stuff like that. So that is what I do every workout now. It's become a habit, a good habit for once. Um, so I'm gonna do like a chocolate, ow, my ankle just popped, did you hear that? Ow. Today was arm day, so um, I'm gonna do a chocolate banana, maybe a little bit of strawberry in there, protein smoothie. If you guys have a good smoothie recipe, please drop it below because I honestly end up doing the same thing every single time I make a smoothie. I'm also gonna put some oat milk in here, but I have to move you because you're on the fridge. So I can't get in there without <laughs> moving you guys. Yeah, gonna throw a little bit of Oat milk, like it does not want to focus, does it? Oat milk in there, yeah, wow. 
She's a goner. I'm a big banana girl. Yeah, there are very few fruits I don't like, but I guess I honestly don't like cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is one kind of unpopular opinion that I have with not liking a fruit. Most people really come for me over that. They're like, how can you not like cantaloupe? I don't know guys, I really don't know. Maybe I had a bad experience with cantaloupe growing up and like, I don't find joy in cantaloupe, you know? Which like, it's just not always possible to find joy in every fruit. And this like keeps me full until I'm ready for lunch, which I think I'm gonna do, I have this cauliflower pizza I think I'm gonna have a few slices of for lunch and then honestly probably save the rest for dinner because I'm going on like a drink date tonight, a second date, and we're doing apps, like drinks and apps, but I never trust that to be like my full meal because I don't want to be crazy. And when I have a martini on an empty stomach, I tend to be a little bit out there with what I say, um, or just weird, honestly. Like I end up telling really weird fun facts about like dead people in New York and you think I'm kidding, but I'm not, I'm not kidding. For some reason, my mind just like, I'm like, why don't I just tell them the weirdest story I've ever heard in my life? And why don't I just do that? Then I wonder why there's no third date. I'm gonna throw in my chocolate organ, what is this? Chocolate protein powder, creamy chocolate fudge, sorry. Throwing that in there, twisting her up. There she blows. All right, so, moment of truth, does it taste good? Ooh, very good. We somehow managed to achieve the perfect thickness. Mm, 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 mm. So right now, I'm doodling a little magic eight ball for my Patreon wallpapers. I have this idea of doing, well the theme this month is going to be um, magic and noticing magic all around you. That's the quote, so I was like, well, I guess it kind of makes sense to have a magic eight ball somewhere. Um, I'm trying to pull up an example I can show you guys. This is an example. I drew, well I drew this, I wrote this um, on my iPad with Procreate. This is the app that I use to do all of my design work. Well, like my doodling design work, obviously I use like Illustrator, you know, actual fonts for a lot of work, but I really love using my own handwriting and doing things like this. So I have a bunch of options this month. Every month I do like, honestly, hundreds of options depending on what people are in the mood for. But these are just the quote ones that I've done. My favorite ones, are the ones that involve a calendar and a quote. I give so many options every month, I can hardly even decide which ones I wanna use as a background, but I really do love this one, and I think it's pretty cute, I have to say. I love the Magic 8 Ball, though, so I'm gonna try to find another way to put it onto like the desktop wallpapers, so I'm kind of just figuring out that right now. Um, but I have to say, I have to call attention to, if you guys are Procreate users or you want to start using Procreate, I highly recommend. There are these brushes I downloaded called DAJ Watercolor. I think you can, you can probably just Google it. I found it actually in a Pinterest ad. I saw an ad for these and I purchased them. I don't know why it's called this, but the Cat's Tongue Brush is my favorite one. So that's what I've been using today to write and like and do my doodles and such. So anyway, here's my cute little Magic 8 Ball. I love her. I truly cannot believe that it's already June. It feels like I was just making the May wallpapers. The month of May didn't exist, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I actually showered a bit ago and it <laughs> appears my hair has dried. I was going to blow dry it, but I got a little carried away with the wallpapers and such, and so I just didn't get a chance before it air dried, which it's fine. It like air dries perfectly normal and fine, so I think I'm gonna curl it for the date tonight, or I might just like keep it straight. I don't know these days what to do with my hair anymore. Okay, for my outfit tonight, for the date that I'm going on, I was thinking just this black, maxi i love the back of it but anyway i'm excited for the date it's gonna be good it's at this little wine bar 
in the West Village. Um, so we're gonna see, I don't know. I mean, I'm at the stage of my life, or I guess in the summer, I should say, where I'm like, I'm going away for pretty much all of July I'm traveling. So I'm like, I guess I can go on some dates before I leave. But it's like one of those tricky things where it's like when you're traveling, it's hard to keep in touch with someone if you've only gone on a few dates. So we're just kind of having fun with it. That's the goal, that's the plan. And that's what we're doing. And what's a glass of wine gonna hurt? Or who's it gonna hurt? No one, no one. Well, maybe someone, but not me, tonight. <laughs> we're gonna be good. I actually don't have my trainer in the morning tomorrow, but I do have laser hair removal. So can't be out super late, not planning on it, but it's gonna be a fun, just like casual little meetup. I don't know. I think once you reduce the pressure of dating, it's so much more fun. I know it's so much easier said than done just like to do that. But once you view it as just getting a drink with a new person, like a friend, it's really so much less stressful. Also like the stakes are just so low. Like I'm trying to make them low in my mind. Like if it doesn't work out, it's fine. It's one evening that otherwise like I would just be here probably working, like even though I don't have to, like I'm done my work for the day, but I'd find an excuse to like work on stuff or I would just like be on TikTok scrolling. So like, it's good to get out. It's good to meet people, good to try new places in your city. Like I'm trying this new wine bar tonight because of this. Like I wouldn't be going to this wine bar. I haven't been to this place yet. So maybe it's gonna be my new favorite place. And I just didn't know about it yet. And he is introducing me to it and I could just never see him again. And that's, that's fine. Um, I'm at the stage where I'm just like, why not, you know, why not, why not, wine bar. Sounds good to me, so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. Okay, wait, I changed my outfit. Sorry, disregard what I said earlier. I'm wearing this white, just like, again, very similar silhouette, I feel, like just something flowy, easy, comfortable, not too tight and like, yeah, comfort is very important. And I've worn this dress a bunch to like various dinners and I feel really like comfortable and cute in it. And then I just took my round brush and like flipped my hair in. Looks cute. I'll probably tuck one side behind my ear and that is it, voila. I'm gonna put on some little flats. I have these Steve Madden little slides that I wore all last summer that I love and are so comfy. 65 degrees right now. I think I'll probably wear Bring like a little sweater. I'm gonna tie this a little tighter. No free shows for hinge dates. I think if I bring this, it'll look like I'm going like on a, a sailboat. <laughs> but I usually just like bring something like this to put over my shoulders when I go to like dinner or drinks with friends. But I think it's kind of like a little much. We're in that weird time of year where it's like, is it spring? Is it summer? Are we all committing to the summer look or are some of us still doing spring slash winter? You know, fingers crossed for me. Hopefully it goes well. And he isn't a serial killer. Just kidding. All right, so I just got home from the date. Thought I would do a little debrief with you guys. I feel like I'm, I don't have roommates, but if I did have roommates, I feel like this is what I would do. Like I would sit and be like, they'd be like, so how'd it go? And you would explain it. I mean, granted I text my friends and like they ask, but it's different living alone when you don't have someone to like, be like, so how was it? Let's talk about it right now, you know? It's more like a next day sort of thing. Like, oh, so how'd it go? That's something about growing up, I guess, and living alone. But it was a good date. It was our second date. Went to a wine bar. We did like a wine flight situation. It was like smaller portions of white wine. We did white wine and we both got the same flights. So we like rated the wines as we went through and it was fun and it was great. I feel like we have so much in common, myself and this guy. And we had like a good, good banter, good repartee, good energy. But it's one of those things where it's really hard. And I guess like when you know, you know, and like after doing it a lot, you understand whether or not you have a spark with someone. I don't feel like I had like this electric sort of spark with this guy, but I feel like it's been hard for me to have a spark with anybody. Like in general, I feel like I, you, you kind of have this weird thing where you focus more on did this person like me over did I like them? You're very focused on that. And it's been hard for me to separate that on a date and focus more on do I want to see this person again? Is this someone that I think would fit into my life versus obsessing over the fact like, oh, did they like me? Were they into me? 
whatever. And so I've been trying very consciously to care less about whether or not they, or I guess obsess less over whether they liked me or not and, and care more so or focus more so on what are they saying? How are they acting? Like, is this the kind of person that I want to see again that I would like to infuse into my life like down the road you know it's obviously the first few dates like you it's hard to tell but it's one of those things where you you know if you don't feel a spark you kind of feel like oh it's kind of like a failure sort of feeling you hear stories from both sides people that say like oh you know i felt a spark immediately when i met my significant other and then you hear other people that were like oh it grew on me or we were friends first and then eventually we realized that we were into each other so it's the timelines and the the ways that things progress are so different person to person and so it's hard when i don't feel like an immediate like electric spark for me to be content with that you start to like kind of blame yourself a little bit and you're like am i just going to end up alone forever because i am like the pickiest person in the world and it's it's one of those things where you just have to talk yourself down and realize that there's so much time it doesn't need to all figure itself out so quickly like right now like just because i'm 27 and yes when i was younger i probably thought to myself like when i was 17 for example i thought oh in 10 years i'll definitely be like engaged or living with someone at this point and that's just not how it has gone for me but it doesn't make whoever I end up with like less special and less important just because it had it will happen like maybe a little bit later in life or like not when I fully expected it to happen when I was young and I'm just I'm really actively trying like my my goal for the moment is to not be so hard on myself and to kind of silence the like ticking clock of okay this should have happened by now or this should happen by this age or I'm a failure. I'm trying to silence those voices in my head and just focus on connecting with people and not forcing it, not a, you know, forcing myself to go on like three dates a week because I feel like it should happen by now. So like, you know, you get kind of sucked into the concept of like it's a numbers game and the more dates you go on, probably like the probability of you meeting someone lasting is higher if you meet more people you know it's just like numbers but you know they always say it's like it happens when you least expect it when you're not looking but i have an issue where i feel like i always need to be looking just for my own sanity like i need to be putting myself out there constantly because otherwise i feel like i'm not trying and i've always i feel like in every other area of life it's like the more you try typically speaking the better the result or like the more content you put out like the better odds that something's gonna do well like in my my career you know so it's it's hard for me to pump the brakes and realize i have time i just take each date as it comes and i i like to say that i do that but of course there's always voices that are like but are you trying hard enough or are you just being too picky should you just settle so that's what I, I deal with and I enjoy going on dates honestly like when you reduce the pressure it is fun but then of course when you get home you're like alone with your thoughts at least for me and I spiral and I get mad at myself and I question everything and at these points it's like I get home pour myself a glass of water watch a little show and then go to bed it's only 10 o'clock right now only but like it's kind of early um, so I'll probably like watch a show, get in my comfy clothes, go to bed at a decent hour, wake up and, you know, have a productive work day and everything tomorrow. But it is just so hard. I don't know. I, I'm trying to keep it real with you guys. Like it, I would be lying if I didn't say, or if I said that I feel confident in where my love life is going. Not that it's the most important thing, obviously, but it is kind of tough when you see all your friends or a lot of my friends, like I'd say like I'm getting to the point in life where a lot of people are getting engaged and moving in together and like getting to the, the next step of their lives and I do feel a little bit behind sometimes, but then I, you know, I get really like tunnel vision in that mindset and it's not good. Then I take a step back and I realize, oh, I'm just getting started. Like this is, this is okay, this is fine. Like, but of course I get in my head about it and I think, 
you know, I'm the common denominator in all of this. And so maybe it's my fault. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe my standards are too high or whatever. And it's just, it's one of those things where you're always thinking about it, I feel like, only because it's always brought up. I go to dinners and all sorts of things, like with people that I'm very close with and also for work. Like I'll go to like networking sort of events or things with other influencers. And the number one question that's always brought up is, oh, who are you dating? How's dating? Like it's, it's always brought up. It doesn't matter who I'm with or what sort of situation. Like, of course, there's other things we talk about. Like we talk about other stuff, but it's an inevitable conversation and it always comes up. And I always feel like I have to explain myself, which I'm getting better at realizing that I owe people nothing. Like I don't owe an explanation for anything. I don't have to tell anyone about anything if I don't want to. It's easy to just like, you know, keep it kind of short and sweet and then move on to the next conversation. And there's always a, a more intellectual, more interesting conversation that comes up next, but people are curious. And you, when people are, you know, of course, if they're doing very well and they, you know, they met the love of their life and they have a really crazy cool story to explain about it, it's, it's riveting, it's exciting, it's cool to hear that. And so when you don't feel like you have one at the moment, it can make you feel kind of like less than or something is wrong with you. But I'm realizing that I have so much goodness and so much to give eventually. And I am, I'm someone deserving of all the things that I want, but it's just not my time yet. And so I'm proud of myself for putting myself out there and I'm, I'm not forcing myself to do these sorts of things. Like I, I know it's good for me. It's good experience and it's good to feel like I'm doing something. Like honestly, that does help me. Like I know it helps me. And overall, like I have little fleeting moments of feeling like, oh, maybe like it's me, maybe I'm the problem, but it doesn't last long. And I think in doing this frequently enough, like I feel like it's so much less stressful going on dates when you've gone on a bunch it, it's less stressful because you kind of know what to expect or like how to be and you get kind of good at it, you know? So I think, I think I said this earlier, like I'm going away in July. It's June now or about to be June, I guess. By the time I post this, it'll probably be June, but I know I'm going to be gone for a while. So it's good for me to just like get myself out there knowing that like, I don't like things will kind of fizzle, I guess, if they're not meant to be. And it's fine. Like I have a very fun summer ahead, so I'm not too stressed, but it is one of those things where you do compare yourself a lot, especially in New York where, you know, you watch all these movies and these TV shows where there's all these like fantastic love stories and you're like, well, when's it my turn? So I know, I know I'll get my turn. I know it's only a matter of time and situation and just keeping my heart open so that's what I continue to do but it's interesting I just I know I'm gonna look back on all these moments in my life and be like wow she doesn't know what's coming so it's just a matter of realizing that I'm in that time where I'm gonna look back one day and be you know I just want to do right by myself now like do what I I want to do now and what feels right now and not prolonging things that I know aren't meant to be or kind of a force like I'm not forcing anything um like I meet someone that's nice I'm not gonna be like all right let's get married tomorrow because I'm not getting any younger like I'm not going to do that I'm proud of myself for that and still continuing to keep my heart open even though I've either been like you know hurt or I hurt myself sometimes so and that's it that's all I really have to say <laughs> But it was, in, it was a fun night and it was a good bar and I'll definitely go back. Um, but now I'm gonna watch a little bit of random TV that doesn't really take much brain power and go to bed and do it all over again tomorrow. So anyway guys, that is my little recap from the date. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching guys. This has been a fun little vlog and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.